A digital console is really just a computer with a bunch of audio I.O. and a big fancy control service. So why not just use your computer to make broadcast audio? Today I'm going to be taking a look at Studio One version 5 as a way to mix your live broadcast. Now as a disclaimer, I am using this software in a way that it's not necessarily designed for. So if you try it and it breaks, don't go flooding PreSonus with your complaints. Also, I paid for Studio One 5 professional with my own money, so nobody's paying me to do this. Hey, if you're new here, my name's James and I'm here to help you make every worship mix an enjoyable one, whether it's for people in the same room with you or if you're doing it for a live broadcast. If you haven't yet, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video. When you're using a digital audio workstation as a live mixer, you get to use whatever plugins you want, not just whatever shipped with your console. And you don't have to pay up for proprietary external processors and expensive external I.O. in order to get the plugins that you want. You can use nearly any plugin from any manufacturer, and it's just going to use your computer as the processing power. Included with Studio One Artist and Professional is their FAT channel. This is a channel strip, and it's the exact same thing that ships with their Studio Live Series 3 consoles. If you loaded this plugin on every channel and added a couple effect sends for reverb and delay, you could be up and mixing in no time flat. Now the really cool thing about the FAT channel is not just that it's a channel strip, but their EQ and compressors have different models or plugins within it. So you could put a special EQ on the bass that sounds different from what you can get just with your parametric EQ or the normal compressor. It comes with several built-in and there's more available for purchase. If you're interested in seeing more details about those plugins, comment below and I'll spring for them and do a full review for you. I just haven't bought them yet. Now here's a pro tip for getting started with the FAT channel and changing your default settings. I go ahead and switch on the EQ and the compression, and I switch on all four bands on the EQ. They're not on by default. I also switch my EQ to go before my compressor, because I'm typically cutting more than I'm boosting when I'm mixing live. For the same reason, I also go ahead and make my Q a little bit narrower on the parametric EQ bands. Then you can resave this as the default, and it's already ready already. Oh, and if I could make one request, can we put the high pass filter at least adjustable over by the rest of the EQ bands? Its setting is over on the gate tab, so if I want to adjust that while I'm adjusting my low band, I've got to switch back and forth. I know it makes sense to have it before the gate in the audio path, I just wish it was controllable from the EQ page too. Now when it comes to time-based effects, the reverb and delays are brilliant. I really enjoy them, and they just work the way that you want them to. They're not so dissimilar from a digital console that you're probably used to mixing on that you can't get around. Now the Room Reverb plugin that's included with Studio One Artist and Professional does have some additional controls that lets you get a little bit weird, but either you need it or you don't, you can probably just leave it alone and you'll be just fine. Of course, the beauty of this is you can use almost any reverb plugin you want and it'll probably work. If it works with the workstation, it'll work while you're mixing. It's actually really simple to get audio routed to an effects channel. You just select the channels that you want to send reverb to, and then hit the little plus beside where it says sends. Scroll all the way to the bottom and select add effects channel. This adds a new effects return and puts a send on all the channels that you selected. Now load up your favorite reverb plugin as an insert and you're good to go. The only thing that I don't love about the effects channel is that you can't send an effect to another effect. So if I wanted to send my vocal delay back to my vocal reverb, I would have to copy the plugin from the reverb effects channel over to the delay effects channel and then adjust the dry wet mix to get it just right. But then if I make any changes to my reverb plugin, it doesn't change it on the delays reverb. If you want to get around this, use a bus channel instead of an effects channel. That way you can do the routing the way that you want to. Now let's talk about some of the mixing tools. The first thing that I like to do is group things. And if you watch my other tutorials on how to mix for a live broadcast, there's different ways to group your channels together and compress them before they get compressed at the stereo bus. It makes it a whole lot easier to get your mix levels up and balanced going out to the stream. Before you can route your channels to a bus, you have to create the bus. So if I look down here, there's no bus yet. So I have to go up here and say, add bus channel. It's going to add it after my selected track, put it here, name it, drum bus, and now we can take these and assign them there. If you want to put a bus on a send though, you can make it as the same time as you're assigning it. So we go down here, add bus channel, rename it, and it's good to go over here. So you can have, you know, less toms or less overheads or whatever you want to do with that. Of course, if you want to process each bus with different plugins, that can create a timing difference, which we'll talk more about delay compensation in just a minute. Now, another feature that I use a lot is using VCAs. 
A VCA is a way to remote control a group of faders. So whatever faders are assigned to that VCA, any difference above or below zero on that VCA channel will also affect all the channels assigned to it up or down. It's not the same as a group because you can't process the audio. It's just a remote control. You could use this to balance the levels of the sections of your different bands, so all your drums on one VCA and all your guitars on another VCA. But what I've been using it for lately is to have the overall level of all my band inputs and crowd mics. So when I'm transitioning between the worship band and the speaker, I can pull down the worship band slowly all together without it being a big jump of just hitting mute and all the noise goes away. Also then, when it's time for the band to come back up, I can ease them in if they start playing while the preacher is finishing up or praying. I'm a big fan of having a start scene or a bass scene to get started with. The more decisions you can make before you start mixing, the more energy you're gonna have to make better decisions while you're mixing. Create a vanilla mix and save that as a template. You might go ahead and add some basic EQ to the channels that you know you're gonna EQ a certain way. You might have a starting point for some of your vocals or your drums. Or you might just put the frequencies in the right spot but leave the gains at zero. Additionally, on your compressors, you might preset your attack and release times and your ratio, but leave the threshold up so that it's not compressing when you start, but it's easy just to crank down on that threshold and you're getting the type of compression that you want. And you'll definitely want to set up your groups and effects channels. That stuff eats up a lot of time and attention. To save a template, go to File and then Save as Template. Name it what you want, and then you'll find this in the Users tab when you go to create a new session. For each week or each worship band, you'll create a song file. Then for each song and each section of your worship service, you can create a scene, which is like a snapshot. Now, scenes are my favorite new feature in Studio One version 5. If you've got a different singer leading each song, you can change their EQ and fader level to adjust automatically when you click on this new scene. It can also change any other settings, so your reverb time could be matched to the tempo of the song, or your vocal tuning plugin can automatically change key as well. I tested this out when in live input mode, meaning I was listening to the inputs coming straight into my converters, I wasn't listening to things that were already recorded on the hard drive, and I had a really hard time making it pop or click or break in any way. I switched fader, EQ, compression settings, even the key on Waves Tune real time, and none of it glitched. Now, I'm sure if I played with this for a long time, I could get more things to glitch. And I would love to see a feature in the future where they have a fade time between scenes. One of the features of Studio One 5 is the show page for live performances, so I might not be too far off with that suggestion. Now, another thing is that if you're worried about some channels changing that you don't want to when going to a new scene, you can check the box that says Selected Channel Only under the Recall Options. This way, any channels that aren't selected are just going to stay the same. Before starting to try to use this as a live mixer, you should probably start with recorded tracks. I talk about how to import files and get all that set up in another tutorial over here about practicing live mixing at home. So once you've got your template up and you've got your routing assigned right, you can go ahead and start with your live band and put the tracks in monitor mode and record ready. Whenever they start rehearsal, go ahead and record all of it. It's all going to be really helpful to use as a virtual sound check if they stop playing but you want to keep tweaking. Or if you can't be there for rehearsal and somebody else records it, you're still good to go. You'll also want to record the service so you can hear what it's like when people are actually playing the way that they play in front of people, not just in a rehearsal or sound check. Because we all know there's a difference. Now we get into the really tricky part of using a digital audio workstation as a live audio console, and it's called delay compensation. When you're in playback mode, Studio One compensates for the latency created by plugins. But in record mode, this delay compensation gets turned off. They're expecting that you and the musicians that are monitoring through the digital audio workstation want to hear themselves as quickly as possible. They're not banking on you using high latency plugins while tracking. Of course, if the plugins are the same on every channel, then there's no need to compensate for everything. But you don't need auto-tune on your snare drum, so how are you going to get around that? The solution is to use a delay plugin on all the channels that aren't using as much latency in their plugin chains. Now the stock plugins were a little bit clunky to get me what I wanted. I just wanted a straight delay with no tone or mix controls. So I found a free one called Voxingo Sound Delay and it does exactly what I want. I can even type in the amount of delay that I want and it does it. Measure the delay difference between two channels and add delay to the one that's still arriving earlier than the other one. Now this matters a whole lot on sources where you've got multiple mics on the same sound source, so drums. You want the timing relationship to stay rock solid to avoid comb filtering. You'll also want to make sure that the timing between groups of instruments isn't disturbed too much. But this isn't going to ruin your mix if it's just a tiny bit of delay. So if you're understanding this or thoroughly confused, 
type delay down in the comments below and explain to me what you don't understand. Now, one other feature that I really love is the listen bus. This allows you a second output alongside your main output so that you can add some processing to what you're listening to. Sometimes your speakers might have some room calibration and you might want to add some EQ to those, but you don't want that EQ going to your main mix as well. That kind of defeats the purpose. Or you're mixing in headphones and you're using Waves NX Virtual Mix Room. That can be really helpful for making sure that your mix really gets dialed in and things aren't too wet or your vocals aren't too far out in front. The first thing I use this for is soloing, because sometimes you need to just identify what's going on in the channel without pushing it up in the mix. Or some of your keyboard players might be a little too creative and you're not exactly sure what they're sending you in the first place. Here's another pro tip. Load an EQ on your listen bus that makes it sound like a phone speaker. That way you can switch this on and off and see what it sounds like on a little tiny speaker. One of the benefits of having your console and your digital audio workstation from the same manufacturer is that they play really nicely together. DAW mode in your Studio Live Series 3 console is super easy. I'm really addicted to having faders in front of me. Plus, using a mouse just slows me down. Sure, you could use any MIDI controller you wanted to remote control the faders, but the Studio Live Series 3 integrations are really, really nice. It gives you more tactile controls and screen control as well to really get to what you want quickly. Plus, there's no programming hoops to jump through, and that's really simple. Because I love audio. I don't love IT. Now, the other problem that the Studio Live console solves is that you can use it as an audio interface. With all of the Studio Live Series 3 mixers, you can use up to 64 channels of I.O. over USB. I mean, that's a whole lot of channels over USB. The Studio Live has a lot of other ways you can integrate Studio One into the console itself, but that's another video for another day. If you're interested in seeing that, drop a comment down below and let me know. Even with the best tools at your fingertips, it can still be really hard to make a great live broadcast mix for your church. If you're wanting to know how to take your mixes to the next level, I made a free guide for you called How to Lead Your Church Audio Stream Team. There's a link down in the description below. Now to sum it all up, Studio One is a great tool for using to mix your live broadcast. The scenes are fantastic and can definitely help you get it dialed in just right. There is some work that you have to do to get around the plug-in latency, but if the job was easy, they wouldn't need us. And until next time, remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you next time on Attaway Audio.